When a football program makes a habit of annually winning 9 to 11 games, challenging for the conference title, and playing in major bowl games, it's hard to distinguish one season from another. Each and every one of Bill Snyder's nine seasons as head coach of the Kansas State Wildcats has been special. During that time, the K-State program has been nationally recognized for orchestrating the greatest turnaround in college football history. The Wildcats are now one of only six football programs in the nation to win at least nine games in each of the past five seasons. Only Florida State, Florida, Nebraska, Penn State, and Ohio State can also make that claim. During that five-year run, the Cats have been ranked in the top 25 for 51 consecutive weeks and in 76 of the last 80 top 25 polls. That extending back to 1993. Those numbers tell the story how K-State has firmly entrenched itself as a perennial college football powerhouse. But in 1997, this group distinguished itself from the pack. This group took the next step in a quest for a championship, earning its right to be called the best football team in Kansas State history. Coming off the 1996 Cotton Bowl appearance, K-State found itself in a familiar spot entering the 1997 season, ranked in the preseason top 25. But first, a few questions needed to be answered if the Cats were going to challenge for another major bowl appearance in 1997. For the third time in three years, the Cats would be calling upon a new starting quarterback. The defense had to replace seven starters, including all four members of what was considered the nation's best secondary. And the kicking game was awaiting the return of Martin Gramatica, who had set out the 1996 season following major knee surgery. Still, the Purples were full of promise and potential. And on September the 6th in DeKalb, Illinois, the 1997 K-State Wildcats went to work. Well, it didn't take long for junior quarterback Michael Bishop to ease any concerns at that position. In his first Division I football game, Bishop completed 8 of 11 passes for 172 yards and a K-State record four touchdowns. He also carried eight times for 98 yards and another score. And that was just in the first half. It's a shotgun formation for Michael Bishop on third and eight. Back to throw. Bishop's now going to step up and run. Eludes one tackler. Cuts to the outside. To the 40. Bishop 35. 30. 25. 20. 15. 10. 5. Touchdown, Michael Bishop. It is a 43-yard touchdown run for Michael Bishop around right in. Michael, welcome to Manhattan. It's 6-0 K-State. The Northern Illinois game was also a coming out party for tight end Justin Swift. The junior from Overland Park emerged as one of the Big 12's best tight ends in 97 and started the year with touchdown catches of 18 and 8 yards. It was a great way to start the year, you know, uh, two touchdowns in a game. Uh, you know, Darnell had three, but uh, two for a tight end especially, I think, I think that's a big deal for me because I hadn't caught a touchdown pass in my career yet here. so. Uh, I thought that was a great way to start the season off. This game also marked the successful return of star running back Eric Hickson. After missing the entire 1996 season with an knee injury, Hickson made his return in style on this 65-yard touchdown burst to put the Cats up 42-7 at the half. The second half belonged to the K-State defense, which limited the Huskies to 11 first downs and only 162 yards. The aggressive, hard-hitting Wildcats forced three fumbles and capped the scoring midway through the fourth quarter with this safety by Andre Rowe. K-State rolls in the season opener 47 to seven. The 97 Cats opened the home season the next week against Ohio, and the Wildcats were greeted by yet another sold-out crowd at KSU Stadium. Any concerns about the kicking game were quickly alleviated in Game 2. Less than three minutes into the home opener against Ohio, Lamar Chapman set sail 
on this 94-yard punt return. Chapman back at his six, pulls it in. Needs a block, gets one, goes to the 10, 15, 20. Lamar to the 30-yard line, 35. Dukes gets by the punter, midfield, 40. He's going to go, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Kansas State. It's a 94-yard punt return by Lamar Chapman and the Wildcats. Lead it 6 to nothing. It was my second time, you know, doing punt return for the year. It was the second game of the season. And when he kicked the ball, I was just pretty much thinking about just catching the ball, you know, um, getting up the field. You know, then when I seen the, I seen the hole, I seen the hole, and I just ran. I ran for daylight. It was a big opening, and I just ran and scored a touchdown. Meanwhile, kicker Martin Gramatica began his All-America season in style by booting three field goals in the victory, including kicks of 52 and 55 yards. His 55-yarder tied the Big 12 record, and he became the first Wildcat to make two field goals from more than 50 yards in the same game. This game also included a spectacular offensive play that made all the highlight reels. Bishop gets a snap. He's rolling in the pocket. He's being hit, and he's going to go to, now he's still on his feet. Gets away from the two defenders, rolls to the near side. Now he's going to launch the ball downfield. His throw, Gavin Paris, it's a jump ball situation. Paris makes a catch inside the five at the three, and it's a first down for Kansas State. That is unbelievable. That is so reminiscent of the play in the Cotton Bowl as Gavin Paris pulls it in. It's a 39-yard pass from Bishop to Paris, and the Cats have first and goal at the three. Bishop scrambling around, it seemed like a couple minutes. I was out there, uh, you know, trying to find someone to block. I found myself halfway across the field from where Bishop was, and I looked over and he still had the ball. So I was trying to wave him over to, uh, you know, towards my direction so I could get a, a good shot on somebody. And uh, before I knew it, I looked up and he just launched the ball out. And uh, Gavin made a tremendous catch. And, and that, that's a play that will stick out in my mind for a long time. The Wildcats held a comfortable 23-0 lead at halftime, but the upstart Bobcats rallied in the second half to make this one look close. Junior linebacker Travis Oaks ended any thoughts of an Ohio upset with this interception in the final minutes. The Wildcats completed a perfect 3-0 non-conference season with a 58-0 shutout of Bowling Green. It was a long day for the men in orange as K-State held the Falcons to 56 yards and minus 9 yards on the ground. Snyder takes a snap, hit quarterback draw. He was trying to show, throw a shovel pass and K-State just buries him. Ball to the 32. Snyder running the option, pitches it back to Hollis. He gets cracked and stopped. This game saw the emergence of linebacker Jeff Kelly, who served notice that he would become a dominant player at the Division I level with three sacks. 8.49 left third quarter. Play action fake, Snyder back. Gets hit, Kelly brings him down. Jeff Kelly with a sack back at the 10-yard line, a loss at 10 on the play. Played uh, Bowling Green. I had a, like two sacks or three sacks, and uh, I really felt comfortable playing. And, uh, and ever, ever since then, it just ticked. I think our next game was maybe a couple of games was Nebraska, and I just felt comfortable with all the adjustments and everything that was taking place. On offense, the Wildcats rolled up a school record 638 yards. Running back Eric Hickson showed his return from off-season knee surgery was complete as he rushed for career-high 163 yards.